and we are pre-recorded. You know, not live, uh. We're not live. No. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi. Welcome back to Dead Air. Um, I was always here as Kyle, the handsome co-creator of Ghost Maps. Yeah, and the Pau Kaleo. Uh. Yeah, and uh, here's Wayne, the, I would like to think, equally handsome co-creator of Ghost Maps. Equally handsome. Uh. Yeah. Try not to block your face. I, I will try not to block my face yeah. because I am, you know, that good looking. Today we have a very exciting ex- episode, actually. Yes. Yeah. Um, we we have, have not one or two authors, but three authors. Mm. Not not the right, uh, right. not the animal. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I literally was trying to do the math. Sounds like oh yeah, like, you, you're not author. <laughs> Technically, I guess I got book right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. Um, we have with us today, guys. Uh, Wesley Leon Aruzu and Sufian Hakim. Say hi, guys. Hey. Um, if you guys are not familiar, and um, shame on you if you're not. Um, let's do let's do the the very In. official sounding intros. Yep. Okay, go for it. Um, got a bit of a sore throat today, so my official sounding voice will also sound a little bit sexy as well. Um, Wesley Leon Aruzu is a filmmaker with thirteen little pictures and a lecturer at La Salle College of the Arts. He is also the author of the Punka. I'm gonna I'm gonna double check whether I'm pronouncing this correct. Okay, the Punghawala and the Prostitute. Correct. Yep. Pass right. Okay. Yeah. Good. Uh, a finalist for the Epigram Books Fiction Prize. Wesley's documentary to his novella, I Want to Go Home, was nominated at the Busan International Film Festival, while his novella, Badok Reservoir, was adapted for the stage. Wesley, say hi to everyone. Hello, everyone. Uh, Sufian Hakim, our other guest for today, hey. uh, is a Singaporean author, screenwriter, and playwright. He is the author of the national best-selling parody. <laughs> <laughs> Harry <laughs> bin author. <laughs> Did you say Harry, Harry's been the author? <laughs> Every single time I try to read out the title of this book, I laugh. Harry's been Potter and the Stone Philosopher. It's a nice name. The, Thank you. Thank you. Every time. <laughs> the Epigram Books Fiction Prize, long listed, the keeper of stories, and most relevant to us today, the supernatural comedy, The Minorities. Yeah. Yeah. Hey guys, what's up? Um, guys, how are y'all doing today? Good, yeah. Yeah, good. yeah. Happy good. to be here. Exactly. Yeah, right. Um yeah. not tired or anything. I know I know you've just come from from teaching classes, yeah. Yes. Was, yeah, teaching <laughs> teenagers. It's um it is draining, but but being away from them right now, I feel my energy coming back. Yeah. It's it's so exciting. You're molding you're molding the, yeah, the yeah, minds yeah. of our youth. Exactly. Today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wesley, I don't know why you're not I don't know why you're laughing at your lecturers. <laughs> What do you think? So we we've kind of gone, we've kind of run through like the, the stuff that you guys are known for. But why? What do you think were the projects that first brought you guys to the public's attention, uh, and why do you think these were the first ones that resonated with people? Mm. Um, I guess for me, obviously, it's Harry's been Potter. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I wrote it. I wrote it as a as a very bored. Um, uh, polytechnic student. I remember the lecture so well. It was media media management. Worst, like most boring ass lecture in the world, and I was just dying of boredom. And I just wait, wait, hang on. Wait, when you were in polytechnic, yeah, I wrote the first chapter or what would <coughs> what would, or the first iteration of oh what would eventually God. become that book. Yeah, in, in my head, it's I mean, okay, it's not recent, but it's more re- holy cow, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's recent, yeah. So, okay, yeah. so it was, it was a it was a period of my time where I was finally starting to realize that my. Um, my oh, the race, the religion I was born into affects um, my human experience, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, and I didn't have the sophistication of mind or language to to explore it properly. Mm. So I did it the only way I could at that time, which was humor. <laughs> so I started writing just parodies of um, uh, you know just putting in Malay characters into. Western popular culture. So I would like little bit writing Tudong, uh, yeah. um, <laughs> Three Shades of Brown, wow. uh, to parody Three Shades of Grey. And of course, the, the one that really took off was Harry's Bin Potter. Nice. But it was, just, it was really just an exercise in, well, first it was an exercise in, in, in overcoming boredom at the lecture, but mm. it was also a continuation of, of just me um, exploring the disconnect between you know, the, pop, the Western popular culture I love and, and how I was raised. Mm. Yeah, um, for some, it went viral. Um, 
I didn't expect it to. Um, back then, uh, I think I don't think Instagram was around because mm. Uncle's quite old. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, no, so no, we just said. Facebook and it, it went around on on Facebook and yeah, and then um, yeah, from there it um, it it blew up in in ways I just didn't expect. You know. <laughs> yeah. did, did you thank your um, what, what was the subject in media media management, media oh. management. did you thank your lecturer I, do, I don't even thing? remember who the lecturer is right <laughs> now <laughs> is that boring uh? yes wow it's like you know how to manage a production I mean mm. you're a filmmaker so like you know um, how I mean yes they are important skills <laughs> and we are creating a media product yes, yes, but, yes. but it was about you know like it's the dry day. stuff yeah right? exactly yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> wow, that long. Ago. I'm sorry, I just like it. It, it was two thousand nine. Wow, nice. Yeah, yeah. See, on one hand, like that number sounds about right, but on the other hand, I'm like, that's, that's yeah, that's time. That's fourteen years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> uh, Wesley, mm. what about you, man? What What do you think was the first project of yours that you think started to get like eyeballs on you? Um, I'm not too sure, but I think um, the project I did about um, Mr. Takamatsu in Japan yeah. uh, for the mm. book, I Want to Go Home, I think that got a bit more um, attention mm. um, also because it was screened um, in other countries and yeah. things like that. So um, in case the viewers don't know what it's about, it's about uh, my journey to meet a man called Mr. Takamatsu and he's in his 50s at that time in 2015 mm. um, and he dives every week to search for his wife whom he lost to the 2011 tsunami. Um, he still dives till today. He's now 60 plus and he dives every two weeks or so. Has he found his wife? Um, no, but uh, sometimes they would, he would join um, diving trips with other divers as well and they would find um, trinkets or things that belong to other residents. Mm. So that's their, one of the main things they're doing to find mm. things that belong to other people. Yeah, so nice. I think that, that book, I think it managed to reach out to more people because it wasn't just a book. There was yeah. also a, a documentary as well. Mm. So I think it helped to do two things, yeah. I mean, like you've talked about this before and mm. we, we kind of know the, the, the background behind why it's a book and a documentary, but like for mm. people who are, are not sure, how, why is it a book and a documentary as well? What, what's mm. the background behind it? So it's interesting because it was always meant to just be a book. Yeah. So I wanted mm. to write a book about him, um, but I couldn't get funding for the book. So um, one day I managed to get funding from a Japanese organization called Tokyo Film X and they asked me, hey Wesley, what are you doing today? What are you doing now? And I said, oh, I'm writing, I want to write this book, but I don't have funding to mm. go to Japan and do this thing. And then they said, oh, why don't you do a documentary as well? Then we can fund your documentary. And at the same time, maybe you can write your book. So I was like, oh, that's interesting. Okay. Mm. So I took the money. I went to do my book, which was a priority. And mm. the documentary was just something by the side. I brought my student up and he was filming it for me. Mm. Um, so my plan was always to just write the book and the documentary was like, ah, just do it and then get the money for it. That was the plan. In fact, when I did the documentary, when I was editing it, my goal was just to put it up on YouTube. Mm. That was mm. what I wanted to do. But as I was editing it, I felt uh, I couldn't do that to uh, Mr. Takamatsu and spend so much time with him and with this content. So I needed to put yeah. like, okay, I need to do my best for this documentary. Um, yeah, so, and then I submitted it to Busan for some reason it was chosen. It's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, so yeah, I, strange. I like how you casually like, oh, I submitted to Busan. And for some reason <laughs> it was chosen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very, very nice, like, just, mm, yeah. Mm, yeah. <laughs> no, that, that was, I, I remember watching the documentary and like, because you, you did a small screening at Crane, I remember. Yes, we did, yeah. uh, was it that was that was an edited version? The edited version, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. I, I watched it as well, and I, I need to add because uh, I he's actually my ex lecturer from film school. Mm, yes, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> but he's, he looks very young, so uh, and I was there when the production happened. Uh, not mm. not there there. I, I was during in that timeline. I was still in film school, mm. and then. Uh, one of my classmates went with him to Japan to do the documentary. Oh, was John like, was your, your batch? Huh? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> you forgot already. Forgot already. <laughs> yeah, oh. so 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 we, I knew of that happening and then when he came out, you know, in the news, like, oh, he went to Busan and then I watched it, I was like, Pff, mind blown. This, I, I, like, it's worth mentioning also, I think some of our regular viewers actually see Wesley's name pop up when we used to do Dead Air Live. Oh yeah. Because he was doing Dead Air Live. <laughs> the, and, and, yeah. and yeah, he, he, he left a few comments on Art's episode as well. <laughs> there was a, I, it, it's worth telling the story. Um, oh no. You know, I, I love this story. Oh man. Because like, I remember um, 
when I Want to Go Home first came out, I I hadn't been published yet. And I went down for, um, mm. you had a joint launch at Kino with another author, I can't remember who it was. Um, but yeah, you had a joint launch at Kino. And I went down, I introduced myself. Oh, I was like, oh, hi, uh, my name is Wayne. Um, I happen to be friends with your ex-student, Kyle. Then you went, <laughs> oh, Kyle, yeah. And I was like, oh yeah, we're working together on something now. And the first words out of your mouth was, horror, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, I remember that, yeah. Yeah. So, cool. so Wesley, Wesley knew about Hantu before Hantu became a thing. Right. He, he really saw it coming. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Enough, enough. Um, Personal like back and forth stories kind of thing. Um, so Vian, mm. may I have a copy of his book? Yeah, ah, there we go. Yeah. <coughs> the minor. Wait, hang on. Ah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The minorities. <laughs> Sufian, tell yeah. us a bit about the minorities. Ooh, oh, so much to unpack. Um, yeah, the, I know, mon- right? <laughs> the the minorities um, was the book I needed to write after Harris Ben Potter mm. fell into place. Um, so I started writing it shortly after my my grandma's death, and it was yeah. it was weird because like it was one of those deaths that um, that made me confront mortality. You know, when people sometimes when people die, you know, um, it seems very it's distant, it's um, well, it's sad, but it it's not. Sometimes it's not uh, well, depending on who the person is, it's not life changing. So yeah. my my grandma's death was the first properly life-changing death um, and I, I kind of wanted to so it was my, it was my first time confronting mortality yeah. you know um, processing the idea that somebody is in your life and then suddenly they're not yeah. um, and and I guess um, uh, t- more of the fact that um, you wonder where they are after everything mm. so I guess I guess that was that was why I wanted to sorry that was why I, wa- I wanted to um write about supernatural entities in the minorities. But uh, well, of course, as most of the things that I write, I, I, a lot of stimuli just come like converging together. Mm. And and I guess I was, bec- it was, I was writing at a time when I was becoming more and more socially aware. Mm. Um, you know, we are not in an equal or just world. Um, yeah. And I wanted to write about that experience. Mm. So the minorities was really that. Um, the supernatural, of course, is mainly a metaphor for the people yeah. we pretend don't exist, mm. you know, whose language we might not speak yeah. or mm. um, who um, who we try to ignore. Um, so so when, when I created the character of the protagonist in mm. Minorities, I wanted him to, to kind of bring these people on the sidelines together. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Of course, I, I mean, the uh, because that's my main vehicle, I, I did it in a comedic way, mm. but that was really what I was trying to, trying to explore. Mm. So the idea of the character of Diana is that it's really just to explore that. This Diana, plus the uh, Pontiana. Yes. Sorry, okay. Yeah, just for context, yeah, Diana is the name of the Pontiana mm. in the minorities. Um, it's really to explore that. It's really to explore somebody who's away from home, who just wants to go home. Mm. Um, but, you know, there are always bigger forces at play um, who, who try to limit um, her freedom and, and where she can go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, so there's that. Uh, of course, it's represented more clearly in, in the character of Cantona and Tights, who mm-hmm. are two illegal immigrants, one from Bangladesh, the other one from China. Um, you know, they try to, uh, they're illegally in Singapore. So mm. they they um, they can't get home because there's no way they can yeah. legally find a way out. Mm. So ultimately, it, uh, and, then, uh, and then finally the character of Shanti, who is Singaporean, but running away from an abusive gangster husband. Um, so these are people just sidelined yeah. in, in various ways. People mm. slash Pontianas sideline <laughs> in in various ways, and and I wanted to explore that. What what's it like living like that? What's it like? What does that do to who you are and and, and your mm. dreams? Mm. What does that do to the kind of relationships you can form? Yeah. Both, I mean, personal and romantic. Um, and ultimately, that's what really the minority is about. Is about. Of course, yes, there are, there are ghosts, ghosts in there. Um, and there is the <laughs> convention of metaphysical entities that uh, or come inside. 
C U M E in there that that tries to uh, manage the affairs of of the supernatural beings in Singapore. Nice. Um, but yeah, ultimately, it's 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 exploring life away from all that, away from the institutions that try to control you and define who you are. Mm. Yeah, and and trying to find home ultimately. I mean, like you mentioned that the supernatural creatures, the, the what Diana specifically and come broadly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, um, they're, they're, like, they're, they're, they're a metaphor for, like you are saying, like the, the, the people on the sidelines and everything. Mm. And I think we see this quite a lot in horror as well. But why do you mm. think like supernatural creatures are a good metaphor for these things? Well, I mean, coming from somebody who whose idea of horror was shaped by, I'm sure for all of us, by, by Southeast Asian law mm. and all that, if you realize, I mean, most of the ghosts or, or supernatural beings here have a social function that yeah. they um, that they serve. Sort of. I mean, like or, or like they, um, what they become in the afterlife is very dependent on um, either how they died or how they lived. The Pontiana, for example, mm. um, you know, dies at. Uh, forms when a woman dies at childbirth, right? Mm. Yeah. So I, I think there's, there's a lot to unpack there in terms of, of how, you know, our ancestors or the people who came before us viewed, you know, the the, the feminine body, right? Yeah. Mm. Um, mainly in terms of, of, of um, you know, the ability to produce a child mm. and, and therefore the ultimate tragedy for a woman is when she, you know, she fails to, Mm. produce a child and dies at, at that moment. That's the ultimate yeah. tragedy, right? Mm. It's a combination of both death and the, the inability to produce life, mm -hmm. right? So um, uh, the penangal, for example, you know, the idea of a floating head yeah. <laughs> is, um, you know, is, is somebody who, whose who's, um, thinking faculties is removed mm. from their body. Um, the Toyo da is a is a baby that dies, mm. uh, and therefore serves no other purpose other than to get you uh, money. So I, I think there's a lot of um, there's a lot of social psychology that 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 mm. plays into the types of ghosts we have in, in, in yeah. where we live, right? Yeah. In our in our part of the world. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so I think that's why. Um, and these were these were the ideas that you know I, I fell into the metaphor. Um, mm. You know the why I was looking at all the ghosts and supernatural beings we have in Singapore and in our in our region, and I was wondering why why like this <laughs> why specifically why specifically you know um, um, nail in the head and uh, sorry nail in the neck <coughs> to yeah. control a Pontiana why why a Pontiana why form only because you die at childbirth mm -hmm. why. Yeah, uh, of course, I, I don't really have the answer. Like that there's, there's a lot of mythology to unpack there, so yeah. many different sources, but I, I think I was looking at more of um, how that affects who they are mm. as people. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Wesley, I actually wanted to get your thoughts on that, mm. but um, first, I also want to set up a bit of context because you, you had a ghost story monologue, I think it was last year, right? <coughs> yeah, correct. For um, Story Fest at the Arts House. And it's about a folk lore I've never heard of before. Like I've never heard this one before. So I, I kind of want to ask you about this. It's the folk lore of the Kepala Anjing. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah. Which <laughs> just for people who don't speak uh, Malay, Google. it's <laughs> dog head, right? Yeah. 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 Dog head man. Yeah. Dog, yeah. dog head man. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> like I've never heard this one. What what is the history of that folk? What is it, what is it about? So I think, um, so when I grew up, I grew up in Bedok. It's actually yeah. quite new here at Bedok North. And then um, when I was growing up, there were some overhead bridges that connect like a park to the residential mm. HDB areas. And then my mom would tell me that, oh, um, these bridges, you know, the rumor is that there are kids head buried under the this overhead bridge mm. so that it builds, it has like good foundation and the bridge won't fall down. Yeah. Um, the other thing happening during the 70s, 80s were supposedly there were a lot of um, children being kidnapped and stories about this. Mm -hmm. And so parents would share the stories of this scary creature called a kapala anjing um, that would be around to kidnap kids at night. So if you're a kid, don't go out too late because you'll be kidnapped and then yeah. So you're not kidnapped by a real person, but you're kidnapped by this. So it's human body. Human body with a dog's okay. head. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's what I remember growing up with um, that story. And I was like, oh, okay. So every time I see the bridge, even until today, 
I I think about that. Like, oh, the bridge has like kids' heads. Which, which one? Yeah, which bridge is it? Um, <laughs> is it the question. exit towards PIE? Yeah, the PIE is one. Yeah, the PIE. Is, is it the bridge? The the car the car bridge? Uh, not not the the. Um, no, the walking bridge. The the one with moss overgrown underneath one, right? The green yeah, one. It's yeah, like a curve. Like that. Yeah, towards yeah. Budot uh Budot Town Sec. Yeah, but yeah, that that's one. I, yeah, that's my school, primary school. <laughs> I guess it was super. I just I just revealed a lot of personal <laughs> information. <but laughs> just yeah, yeah. So guys. <laughs> So there were a lot of stories about this and then I decided, okay, I think even the Kapala Anjing, there's many versions of this Kapala Anjing story. Mm -hmm. um, but as, as Sufian was saying, you know, these stories all serve like a social kind yeah. of reason, yeah. you know? Yeah. So um, so I decided, okay, it'd be nice to tell a story about this. So the story is about a guy named Andy, who's a construction worker who discovers a skull under the bridge when they are kind of like revamping the bridge. Lah. Mm. And then how this skull kind of curses him and then the story kind of goes on mm. from there. Yeah. So it's fun to, to kind, kind of uncover old folklore and kind of bring new life into yes. it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. My God. The, 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 the version that I heard from my grandmother is uh, actually an old lady mm. who yeah. will kidnap you and then chop off your head and then, you know, deliver to an, <laughs> an, a shadow organization that would use it to build bridges in Singapore. Oh, nice. So like, it's, it's like, <laughs> that's sweet. To, well, to be fair, my grandmother, you know, post-war Singapore, yeah. uh, went through World War and then came from Malaysia. So a lot of weird stories you hear from her. Mm. But it combines like both horror as well as like government conspiracy. Yes. Because <laughs> yes. the government has outsourced building these bridges to a, <laughs> to a shadowy Not, organization. I mean, it's <laughs> getting hits, the <to> procuring hits. <laughs> that's what she said. <laughs> like, don't poff mommy, but like, you know, <laughs> yeah, but but as a kid, you will be terrified, right? Yeah. So if you don't okay. sleep and you go out at night, this will happen to you. Then you get like terrified. Like they will use supernatural, yeah. And so <laughs> like, no, I, I, I find that very interesting because like I've heard, that's the thing. I've never heard of the Kapala Anjing before. Mm. What I've heard is that story of children's skulls, because it was like late yeah. 70s, early mm. 80s on there, right? Children's skulls being used um, in the construction of bridges. The one that I heard was Benjamin Shears Bridge. Mm. Oh, that's okay. the one I heard. So yeah. apparently, like you know, oh, to to secure the construction of this big bridge, we'll have mm. children's skulls underneath there. Yeah, I I don't remember the shadowy organization. I, I I'm quite <laughs> sure it was generic, like <laughs> Pontiana or something like that. But like, huh? Mm. When, when you when like so you heard this about the Kapala Anjing when you were a kid. Yeah, and I forgot about it for like 20, 30 years or something. <laughs> and then I was like, you know, I was tasked to do this uh, project. And I how, do you, about it. how did you research that? Like, yeah. where, did you, where did you go to read up about this? Um, I talked to my mom again, and then I, I researched a bit here and there. Yeah. Um, but the whole reason why this event exists is because this, so this event was called Story Fest. And yeah. we we'll come up with stories. And my story was supposed to kind of like honor one of the, one of the winners of the um, cultural right. medallion. So mm. I chose Eric Koo. So yeah. I needed ah. to do a horror story to kind of match. Nice. Blah, 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 blah. Ah, so okay. that's why mm. I even like started actually. If not, I probably may not have done horror, I think. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. Ah. But, but interesting thing about heads is that I also read up that in the 1800s, like St. Andrew's Church, when they were building mm. it, it would always get struck down, like the spine, the, the thing at the top. Lah. So it gets mm. struck down, then they have to build again. So mm. eventually they felt, supposedly the rumor is that they had to bury heads of Chinese men under the church so that the church has good foundation. Why, why Chinese men specifically? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with Malay heads? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. And then even caused like riots um, in Singapore. So the riots were documented. They were real, that people yeah. were afraid and they were like, hey, you know, stop, stop building this church because Chinese men are going missing and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's, that's true, that's real, supposedly. I, uh, I, I do love how your segue was very casually going, speaking of hits, <laughs> very casual. Nice. But is it the same location? Is it still? Yeah, same, same, same. Interesting. I hope they don't dig up stuff there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, nice. and, and like we've, you've talked about um, Diana, the Pontia and everything. Uh -huh. um, I specifically like, you know, she's the one that's highlighted in the minorities. And I think like, it's not a competition or anything, but let's let's be honest here, like the most popular one in Singapore is probably the Pontiana. Of course, yeah. 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 Probably in Southeast Asia. Also. Probably in yeah, Southeast yeah, Asia. Yeah. So like I wanted to ask like both of y'all, like, mm. you know, why do you think that is? Like we talked already about like horror as like mm. kind of a commentary on the social so the the social situation that's whatever is going on mm. and you know what it meant in the context of mm. um you know, people's lives and everything. But why do you think the Pontianat specifically has had that staying power? Mm, uh, well, for me, I think it's it's a mix of um, 
popular culture and media uh, depiction um, or, or, or representation as well as um, mm. um, I don't know just the idea of I mean the monstrous feminine is a is a construct used in, in a lot of literature and, and, and film right mm. so I don't know what it, what it is about the monstrous feminine that, that's so scary to many of us I, I think because well my my theory when I was reading upon it in, and when I was going through it in uni was that the idea that the feminine which is supposed to be a nurturing mm-hmm. um, maternal yep. um, figure turns into something so mm-hmm. that that yep. is the complete yeah. opposite of it I think psychologically I think yeah. that scares us but mm-hmm. I, I think the Punjana has been pretty well um, uh, I mean there were there were movies from the Shaw Brothers era yeah. uh, yep. of the Pontiana there's the Revenge of the Pontiana that was made mm. recently um, who was the director for that? Glenn um, Glenn, Glenn, Glenn. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Glenn yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah uh, and so, so I think and of course there, there's so many uh, I'm probably um, you know uh, not mentioning tons of yeah. movies from Malaysia Indonesia mm. that features the Putyana as well mm. so I, I think um, just a, a combination just um, by by fate or luck um, mm. the, the Putyana has been you know one of the most um, represented monsters I guess so yeah speak. In, in culture, in popular culture, in our part of the world. Hmm. I think it just makes of that. Yeah. Yeah. Nice yeah. Thing, yeah. Um, I agree. I think Potiana is, because it's female and um, it has, a, sure it's scary, but there's a lot of um, sympathy for this character mm. as well. So it hits on both ends as well. It's not just a crazy monster, yeah. right? So um, I remember reading about like Nang Nak as well in, mm. in Thailand oh, yeah, 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 and yeah. Um, how that story also serves a not similar purpose, but kind of like to some degree. And I think the the social aspect of that story also um, is in, also exists mm. um, at that time. I think one of the things was for the community at that time to go like, hey, um, don't listen to your wife. Um, you know, if everyone says your wife is bad, listen to them and that's not, not, not right. so yeah, so it's along those lines like, that's the story there it's like, oh, I'm supposed to learn yeah yeah, Just, yeah. and post Me Too I think the point that I has <laughs> yeah. yeah it has been reframed yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. ever since that, that Vice article went up Remember, yeah. Vice did yeah, an article yeah, yeah, about Pontiana, yeah. which was quite extensive, yeah. and like <coughs> basically, like uh, the they, they said like the female vampire feminist or something like mm. the icon, and then it just blew up, right? And it, it was in wake of that movement as well. Mm. Yeah, and I I I agree with you with what you said that it, at the right time lah, and it got a lot more limelight, like Dracula, right? Mm. Like there's so many species out there, in, in, even in you know America, but Dracula is like mainly the one that people always talk about. Yeah, mm. yeah it's the same thing I feel. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And a lot of overlap lah. Then, nang, 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 yeah. then uh, there's the Pa Tiao Kui, the, the, the banana ghost, oh. the banana spirit. It's also similar-ish mm. yeah, 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 cultural yeah. bridges. So yeah. Um, keeping with the spirit of uh, Kepala Anjing, I, I swear it wasn't a pun to do you know, <laughs> keeping in the spirit thing. <coughs> like, okay, so Ponyara acknowledged is the most popular, but aside from the obvious answer of Ponyara, like what's your favorite um, creature out there? Wow. Like from uh, like Southeast Asian mythology, which one's your Ooh. which one's your favorite? You can go as obscure as you want, or you can go for for Southeast Asian specifically. Southeast Asian. Mm. Wow. wow. I, I, I don't have Southeast list. Asian, but I have Asian. Does okay. that count? Okay. So, okay. so I think for when I was writing the book, I researched a lot about, it's not really spirit, but y- yokais. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so yeah. I found them so cool. Mm. And then they would have like um, illustrations to go with it. So you can see like, oh, that's how it yeah. looks like. So funky. <laughs> so, and I thought some of the stories were just bonkers and so bizarre. Some of the drawings are so out of this world. Um, I think there were a lot that I liked. Um, the ones which I liked more were, I don't remember the names, but there was a, the quite typical thing of like a lady who would, who have long hair and then will like slit your throat if you look at them, like that kind of stuff. Lah. Mm. Um, there was a big creature in the sea, he's like gigantic and and it's like this big creature in the sea like, that would kind of mm. eat you if you don't do what stuff. But I, I love the illustrations. I think they're just out there. Um, and then I realized that even, um, what do you call that yokai, the, the frog guy? Oh, I know the one you're talking about. 
Um, the, the most popular. I frog cannot guy. remember what's his <laughs> name. I I think of him as the frog guy as well. <laughs> yeah, but then I realized, oh, he's a yokai. I didn't know that. Even huh. like the 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 cat that does this, uh, yeah, 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 also like a form of a yokai as well. Huh. So I was like, oh, is it? Yeah, the money neki neko. Is it? Yeah, 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 as well. It's one of them. So I've had a friend who um, o- Ogama. Ogama is the, the yokai. Oh, the frog. Okay. Yeah, the frog okay. yokai. I've had a friend who mm. who saw that cat mm. in a. Okay, I, my friends also also gets drunk very easily. But <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know the I don't know how how reliable this is. But he was saying that one day, um, he was cycling. Uh, he he stays in Bukit Panjang, so he he was cycling. There's there's this cycle path that goes into the woods alongside the PIE. Mm-hmm. Mm. Goes in there and he sees that neko cat yeah. by the tree. And, and he was tired, he was just stopping. And he hears like just um, weird voices from the cat. And he claims it started growing bigger and bigger. Oh my gosh. So th- there's the thing. So I've always considered the cat to be you know, a cute, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. decorative <coughs> thing. I didn't know it was a yokai. Mm-hmm. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But oh my God. Yeah, but okay, I mean, it okay. depends, right? In, in, I mean, in this part of the world, it's like luck, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. But in mm-hmm. Japan, it, I mean, it, it can be a yokai. La. I'm not surprised. Because they have a lot of yokais. Mm, a lot, yeah. Like yeah. the, 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 the sleep mouth woman that you talked about. Mm. Yeah, that, that is, can be considered a yokai, can be considered an urban legend mm. as well. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Like when, when you were writing the book as well, like, because yeah. a tiger does feature mm-hmm. quite prominently in the book. I won't, I won't spoil like what the tiger mm-hmm. is involved, how, how it's involved in the story as well. But like, did you, did you touch on anything to do with like where, it, again, not going to spoil anything, but did you touch on anything to do with like where tigers and stuff like that? I did read about them, mm. um, but I don't think I went down that 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 route lah. Yeah, 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 anyway, yeah. But yeah, yeah. yeah. but I did. I, I, yeah. Not spoil anything like, <laughs> like Just kind of curious as well, like considering like if you were looking at um, Japanese like yokai and mm. everything like whether like the mm. where tiger was was. Not really, no. Okay. Yeah, I don't think so. But I want to share something in yes, case yes, I forget. Yes. Yeah. The the best part of the book is Sufian's like. Word of support in the front. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Nice. I love it. <laughs> Thank you so yeah, much. No, <laughs> no, no, it was, it was my pleasure. It was such a great book. You had to read it out, man. It was a fantastic book. Oh my god, this is the singlet work I've been looking for. Wow! Oh, that's that's wow. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, that's amazing, amazing, amazing! Wow! Thank you so much. So, yeah. so, my pleasure. So, 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 so have a share your favorite entity. Yes. Okay. So, um, mine's a bit closer to home. Nice. There's a there's a Malaysian ghost. Oh, there's a Malay there's a ghost from Malay folklore called the Hantu Raya. Mm. Oh yeah, nothing to do with Hari Raya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Raya just means grand. So yeah. Yeah. um, so it's a ghost or a spirit that um, uh, that serves your family mm. if you treat it well. Yep. And destroys your family from within if you don't. But I was very fascinated by how it's passed down generation to generation. Mm. And there's a specific event that happens when it does. So what will happen is that you will dream of a grandparent or great grandparent passing you a basket. Mm. Huh. If you take the basket, then the Hanturaya passes on to you. Mm. You become the custodian of the Hanturaya in your family. Mm. Uh, if you don't, uh, well, some sources say then your family gets screwed and the Hanturaya ah. wreaks havoc on, on your family. And some people just say, uh, some people say that it just passes, um, it just mm. leaves your family. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I was, I was very fascinated by that. And, and um, as I started working, um, I was always exposed to a lot of people who um, believed in, in these things, that, mm. that their family's success always revolves around yeah. some kind of ghost. So you, you can get one from Bomo and then you pass it on generation to gener- generation. You're supposed to, I don't know, do a bunch of rituals to, to appease it. Mm. So if you don't, then, you know, chaos. Um, but but yeah, a lot of people um, believe that it's because, a lot of people will, will, will look at rich people and go like, oh, they have a hunter raya helping them out, I'm very sure, mm. you know? Um, and it's one of those things, it's just, it's just <laughs> very fascinating because, um, I mean, of course, I don't believe in it, um, mm. but it seeps into so many um, aspects of, of of um, society, like in mm, terms yeah. of, you know, uh, who's in the upper crust and who's not, who's successful and who's not. Yeah. And everything, the conversation sometimes revolves around the idea of Hantu Raya serving your family. Hmm. Yeah. Is it a big thing in Singapore? 
Uh, in Singapore, I don't think so. Not, not so much. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I don't think, um, you know, people here are that superstitious. Mm-hmm. I met people who are, mm-hmm. definitely. Yeah. Uh, I met people who, as they opened their business, started looking for one. Mm-hmm. Uh, we all believe that, um, oh, nice. yeah, that, it, it, that it will hinge their yeah. success. Interesting. Uh, the success will hinge on it. Um, yeah. Uh, and and I, I think it's it's so fascinating because um, the hantu raya doesn't have a specific form. People just say people tend to describe it as a spirit or a ghost. Mm. So it's not like the toyol, mm. which is like you know yeah. uh, a baby, or it's the puntiana, which is a woman, the penangal, which is a flying head. Um, it's just a very formless idea hmm. of something that that helps you in a very uh, in a social slash financial mm. manner. Is similar to the the Taoist belief of a house spirit. So Mm. the Taoists believe that every house has a house spirit and you just have to pray for the first time when you move into a new place and then you will just protect your family. And Mm. after a while, if you don't, you know, pray to it, like in a couple of years, right, then you will just leave your house and then anything can come into your house. Oh it's that whole idea of like you give me, then I take, then mm. I will give you back. Right? Something like it's like a like an exchange, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, actually, it's quite quite Asian, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, that's a very important. Give and take. <laughs> I, I like how my sole contribution to this, while he can give you like cultural and everything, my sole contribution was when you said that when people start their business, yeah. they go looking nice. for it. I was like, oh, so you should get one. <laughs> yeah, get one. Yeah. Oh, Shopee. <laughs> get one. You say get one. Shopee. <laughs> you, you don't say, but I've seen like some weird stuff on Carousel where like, you know, people are selling like, I don't know, charms. I mean, mm. there, there are there are like uh, people who have business on the in Singapore uh, of selling stuff yeah. of the yeah. occult, right? Yeah. Which is quite quite interesting because the, if they can have start a business, that means there are a lot of people who really actually, you know, mm. go for it. Right? I'm quite sure <coughs> we just knocked off two potential sponsors. <laughs> <in this conversation. laughs> Oops. I, I was just thinking that, whoa, do you write that off as like a business expense? <laughs> that start of things? Like, How do you justify that as a cost? I mean, if you, you don't, right? If you succeed, then I guess you can, lah. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. A lot of people, a lot of people said that. Um, uh, who's the one MDB? One MDB for her? Um, oh, um, uh, Naj- Najib. Yeah, yeah, Najib. Najib and his wife and Rosma had their own mm. hunter rayas, which is why mm. they were rich, mm. and then they didn't treat them properly, which is how they got <laughs> found. <laughs> sure, sure, <laughs> Najib blamed the hunter raya. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Yeah. Nice try. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you, you kind of started the ball rolling already. So I, I just wanted to ask you guys. And both of y'all, like you, you're not just authors. Like you've, you've been an actor. You've written for Mediacorp. You've obviously done like shoots and everything um, as a director and all that. So confirm. Not, not got, set up too much expectation for y'all. But got confirm ghost y'all got ghost stories. Right? Ghost story, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. please share with us some ghost stories that have either happened to you or you've heard about like in within your circles? Okay, uh, I have three to tell. Oh, wow. Nice. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, they're gonna uh, love it. I, I can't, I don't have the eye or, hmm. um, yeah, I'm, I'm not my favorite band, I blind. <laughs> So you're, 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 I mean, in team with your book, right? Your muggle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 I'm, a is, yeah I'm a muggle. Yeah. Is, is that actually your favorite band, or do no, you it's just not, yeah. one of my favorite? One of my favorite bands. Nice. Yes, I love Stephen Jenkins. Anyway, um, okay, so I'm gonna start with mild and then get spicier. Okay, yes. okay, let's go. So Mildus was, um, I have an army story. Nice. Anyway, that's, okay, it's pretty but mild. mine was really I couldn't say anything. But um, it was Navex navigation exercise. Hmm. Um, me and my buddy. Uh, there, there is an old kampong. I, I'm not sure if it's still there because uh, it's been a while since I was in the army. Uh, there's an old kampong in Pulau Takong. Mm. I mean, there, there used to be residences there before yeah. they converted into a military um, space. Mm. During the navigation exercise, um, when we were near the kampong, my compass went crazy and it literally took me in circles. Mm. Oh. I went one, one round, got back to the same building. It's, a, it's just a abandoned um, like house on stilts yeah yeah um, uh, it was falling apart you know um, we at about like six plus it was raining so we we went in there for a while then when the rain stopped we came out tried to navigate our way to our next checkpoint mm. um, and we went around in circles 
So by it was like seven, almost eight when when we finally like got out there. And and literally out I was thinking after after a few times of trying to follow the compass, I was thinking, let's just go in one direction, mm. find a uh, find a landmark, and then navigate away from there. I went in circles again. Oh man! So it was it was weird. I don't have it. I'm sure there's some explanation for it. I might have been very 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 tired, but that was that was that was a very weird, unexplainable thing that, that happened to me. How many were of you were there? Two. So, so me and me and buddy, the he, two, two men exercise Yeah. yeah. So do you have a compass as well? Or yeah, so we tried both our compasses. Oh, both didn't work. Yeah, the Kong Yeah, but did you guys get like cast out? Like, why are you so late to your checkpoint? Well, we weren't the last, but we were one of the last. Yeah, they were like. But did you like tell like your superiors? No, no. I mean, like, I mean, everybody was making fun. So like, cause we we also had a we also had a running bet about who finished last. Yeah. Cause some of us, um, and admittedly I was one of them. Some of us were terrible at. N- Nivex, right? Mm. Like, so <laughs> I got better. Mm-hmm. I'm better now. I'm much better now. You know, <laughs> but, but, and, and so there was a bet about who, who finished last, la. So, so by the end, by by then, like you know, my mind was just was more thinking of that. It was just, and we were tired. We just wanted to mm. get back into a, a nice, warm, soft bed, mm. you know, and eat and drink a hot Milo kind of thing. So, so by then it was like hours after we were there. It was like near midnight. So mm. it kind of like left my mind, uh, escaped my mind, but like. I sat down the next day and I like, just tried to think about what happened. And you know, my my theory is that it's maybe a lodestone, like there's a lodestone. Mm. Um, but I mean, I just, yep. yeah. yeah. Two things come to mind. One is chances are probably some guy in the the still house itself with a magnet. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing is, wait, so you weren't even the last one. Ruined. What excuse did they have, the last one? Not because really. yours quite valid. They, they Possible just, supernatural experience. They just really like... <laughs> <laughs> What's the... T- Holland, is it? No, no. Yeah, Holland, yeah, yeah, Holland, yeah. Yeah. Holland, yeah. That's the expression. Yeah. Okay, la, okay, okay. <laughs> not even last and still got a supernatural experience. Not too bad, not too thank bad. You, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. yeah I'm much better than everything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Uh, second one. Um, things get slightly spicy now. Nice. Um, old Tampines Road. Mm. Oh, yeah. Good start. Yeah, yeah. that's the famous one. Yeah. So um, I used to uh, I used to cycle a lot. Mm-hmm. So um, there was one time when I was cycling from my parents' place in Pasiris mm-hmm. to um, to a football place at Thompson Road. So to get there, it's through yeah. the old Tampines Road. Okay. So cycle there uh, football was at 8 so I was like cycling there at 6 plus 7 around there cycle um, just felt weird in general mm. you know uneasy but got to football played football until 10 until 11 I think we, we played one, one extra hour and then cycled back um, as I was cycling back uh, so this old Templish Road um, past the past the Chinese temple already Mm. Uh, I think about two, three bus stops in. Okay. Um, so I, I was, you know, after football, I was, I was really tired. Stopped, stopped at the bus stop. Felt really tired. Mm. Okay. So sat down, sat down, drank water. Um, I didn't say anything, but I felt weird. And I could swear that someone was calling for me. Mm. Um... So I initially I was like, okay, whatever, I'm just hearing things, or like, or like, I'm I'm mistaking something else for mm. my name being said. Mm. So I sat down, chill first, um, and then as I as I cycle again, um, a I felt something. There was just a moment where I tried to cycle, but yeah. my bicycle didn't move. It was as if somebody was holding on to the back wheel. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I heard my voice again. But again, I was thinking like, maybe I'm just really, really slow. Like I'm just really, really tired. So nothing's moving. Mm. So I tried to cycle off and then I finally cycle off. What, what time was this? This was like, by the time I reached that area was like near midnight already. Oh, 11 plus. Ooh, oh, you're, when you were in Old Tembridge Road. So this was, so I, I cycled there yeah. uh, to football, then back uh, from football. So you, your football place is that? Where? Uh, Thompson, the Thompson. Uh, James Cook, the old James oh, Cook. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Thompson, it's quite far there. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's, it's, it's a good distance. Uh, it's a good distance uh, cycle. Second, uh, yeah. Then uh, when you're on your way back, it's the other way, right? Yeah. So you you go through the Chinese because the Chinese temple is the one at the front. Then mm. after that, you cut through. <coughs> then they have like these two weird shaped buildings that looks like yeah, yeah, alien, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, and yeah, you're yeah. deep inside. The third bus stop is the most haunted one. Yeah, also around there. Yeah, the third yeah. bus stop is actually the most haunted mm. one. Like it's like super haunted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. people died there. Oh. Like, like mm. there's a lot of car accident at that at that particular junction. Yeah, yeah. That's that's why. Yeah, yeah. I, I told I told this to my friend. I have a friend who could, who can see, and he's the reliable kind. And then there are those who are like who are, you know, more grounded characters. Yes, they keep quiet, yeah. la, Right? Yeah, exactly. They don't say. Yeah. yeah. Until you ask. Exactly. So, so what did your, so your, he's your friend? So he yeah. said that every time he cycles there, there is a woman sitting on top of that bus stop. Uh. On top of the bus stop. Yeah. Just laughing at him or, or just staring Ooh. at him. But then he still cycle. <laughs> <laughs> he, he has stopped. La. So so the thing about my friend is that he, um, he had a really high fever one day, like in his early adulthood. And I've, ever since then, he could, he says he sees things usually in the corner of his eyes. Oof. Chinese and sometimes, guy? Sometimes, yeah. Chinese guy. Yeah. He's usually this backstory. He's like some Spider-Man power. <laughs> <laughs> and I, ble- is, is, if there is a higher being inside, See who sway. Yeah. Yeah. So so did you like after you experienced that, in your mind, was it like you knew that immediately or it's supernatural? Or was it like, I uh, maybe I just like Again, the thing is because I don't see, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I'm always able to explain away. I think it's <laughs> You're not asking for it, but I think it's <laughs> when I see with my own eyes, <laughs> that, yeah. when it's clear that you know, yeah. then I'm like, okay. Let's, let's right. hope you don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm but but you fine. went home, did you like, I need to like cleanse myself or like, I, I need to go and see a specialist. Did you have that like, uh, or you just like n- slept it off? No, okay. But uh, I just, I just slept it off like, after a while. So apparently, mm. and when I talked to my friend about it, I don't know I can see things. He says, there's a reason why there are two Chinese temples. I think that, are there two or? No, there's about seven. Okay, there's a reason why there are multiple <laughs> Chinese temples along the road, but yeah. um, I think that there's a Chinese temple at the at the entrance and at the end. At the end. Mm. It's so mm. that as you pass by, mm. nothing follows you. Uh, yeah. yeah. So mm. so to set some context for our, like, our overseas friends who are not based in Singapore, Old Tampines Road is a stretch of road. Uh, actually, it's no longer called Old Tampines Road, it's called Tampines Road, but everybody still knows it as Old Tampines Road. So that stretch of road is super haunted. Uh, Apparently, there used to be a village uh, right beside, there's a military airbase just mm-hmm. right beside it. There used to be a village and the village had like some really bad thing happen to it. According to one of our friends, uh, he mm-hmm. told us, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and military ba- base tend to also have some accidents happen. And then uh, there was this lady who was apparently murdered and uh, not, not avenged. La. So she became a vengeful spirit around that road. Mm. And then uh, in the, the middle part, the section, they, I remember they have about five bus stops. The third one, that's where she resides. And I remember very clearly because actually I did uh, a school project this was when I was still in film school. <laughs> and we went there at night actually. Uh, the third bus stop, they actually had a, one of those Chinese lanterns. But it looks, it's the lantern for the date. Mm. They, they have a specific lantern for the date for funeral procession. Then it's just hanging on the, the tree. Right. It's super creepy. Yes. And then we were like, you know, like we we're filming some stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, and I remember super funny because I, at that point I was a full on atheist. So I'm not scared one. I don't care. And I was filming in, guess what? Hungry Ghost Man. Oh my God. And, and no, no. <laughs> and, and even best, film school, right? So yeah. I got Ang Mo friend. So uh-huh. I got my Ang Mo friend to dress up at Pontianak at the bus stop. I mean, if I did that, that shit, right, right, uh, right now I will probably get canceled. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I got her standing at the bus stop, like walking around, like a ghost. Ah. Yeah. And I was filming from like a, the other side of the road with a long lens. So you yeah. can't really see me because it's dark. Right. And I was getting the footage, right? Then got this poor like <laughs> Bangladeshi worker who just ended work at 10 p.m. He obviously wants to go home and there's only one bus through this area. And then he saw her, he was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he thought that she was a ghost, but she's just like, and she can't really see what, because yeah. the long hair and yeah. she's just walking. So she, he, he, he was like standing at the far end and he's very scared. And then I started yelling to him, hey, hey no, it's okay. Then he, okay, he got, but he's still scared. Yeah. So because he knows the reputation mm-hmm. and then the bus came. <clears throat> Saw, saw him and saw her and sped up. <laughs> <laughs>
three times that happened <laughs> to the point of where I had to, okay, let's cut. And then I went over and I said, I'm so sorry, man. I'm so sorry. And then the bus came again and then they horned at us because he thought, the bus driver thought that the ghost was behind us and we couldn't see the ghost. They tell us to run and then he sped off. And then that was, that was when the worker was like, I'm, I'm done. He, he walked to the next bus stop. He walked to the next bus stop. But oh, I mean, surprisingly, God. nothing happened to me la, for that. For that, uh, for that moment, yeah. So, mm -hmm. but it was definitely extremely creepy. I've heard the story several times, and I can't believe he waited for three buses yeah. <laughs> before we, we the have poor to, guy just wanted to go home. We man. have to get the take, no matter what. what? He just needs to go home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, old, old Tampines Road is like super. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, yeah. yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. spiciest one. Okay, yeah. oh. okay. Uh, <laughs> So spiciest one didn't happen in Singapore. It happened oh. quite recently. Uh, happened last year. Oh. Uh, I was in uh, Malmesbury, which is a small village two hours from London. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I was there to visit the Dyson factory for work. So mm -hmm. Malmesbury is weird because there's a, there's a old town that's like what? Uh, that was built in the 16th, 17th century? Mm -hmm. No, earlier than that. Mm. And then you have the Dyson factory, which is like state of the art. <laughs> nice. So, so within three kilometers, you have both ends of the spectrum. Nice. Anyway, so so when I was there, they they put me up in the old Bell Hotel. Mm. Okay, so the the, the the heart of Malmesbury is the Abbey. Okay, um, it's a 14th century Abbey. Uh, it was there since it was there for a long time, mm. and um, the hotel is where the monks used to stay. Mm. Right. So the abbey has a, is literally abbey, uh, cemetery, mm. hotel. Nice. Okay. Um, the hotel is, and and I discovered this only in the plane, uh, to London. <laughs> um, the hotel is the oldest and most haunted, <laughs> in the UK. Multiple websites have reported that. <laughs> okay. Wow. Nice. It, and I sh and so like when I was doing that, then I realized, oh, okay, I need to research this hotel even more. In the past two years, it has changed hand. It has changed hands three times. Oh man! Okay, good sign. <laughs> yeah. Good sign. But but that's the thing. So uh, I mean I mean okay. So now um, the most the most recent owners are from Texas. Um, <laughs> of course. But I think I uh, I think it's it's uh, it's more to the fact that because it's so near um, the Dyson campus, I mm. think a lot of people do visit it anyway. Now that Dyson's a huge brand and everything, right? Yeah. People will stay there. Um, uh, and there, of course, there are people living in Malmesbury, but they tend to live um, just outside the the city center, the town mm. center, where which is old, right? Okay. So first time I was there, um, uh, you know, I, I come around, my wife, my wife is very sensitive. Ooh. Yeah. So um, so I was like, oh, you know, this this the the, the hotel's really nice. Okay, it's so quaint, and you know, right? Uh, I was excited. I was I was being touristy. Okay. <laughs> So I, I show her around <laughs> and all that. So the the moment I open it, she says like she gets very bad vibes. Oh, oh and, hotel. okay. And wait, is she with you or no? So she's in Singapore. So she's yeah. So from Singapore, she already gets bad vibes. Yeah. Also, wait, so you're on the call? With yeah, her. yeah. I was, I, was, I, was <laughs> nice. I was on a video call with her. Okay? Nice. I was on a WhatsApp video call. So I showing her around, um, and it's it it really is okay. It, it's kind of nice because like the wallpaper is like shows um, old medieval scenes, mm. nights and all that. But also like the bar, there are um, there are effigies of old monks. It's really very creepy. Mm. Okay, so there's this there's, there's really a very like uh, very contrasting stimuli yeah. coming in here. You know, the the queenness of, of this old 14th century um, um, hotel and um, and just the the weirdness of, of the, the place just yeah. generally because mm. of, of what it used to be, the cemetery and all that. Yeah. Okay, so I show her around. Um A, there was um not just my room, but the entire hotel as well. I just wanted to show nice. her the space. A there was a there was a place where she said, uh, I think like she said like I, I th there's a lot of very um stale energy in this area. Mm. I think that like people might have died or, or she just had a very bad Juju about it. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Then okay, whatever. I saw like okay, that's scary. Turn back. Go back to my room. Show her my room. Okay. Firstly, it's a four post bed, but there is there is a space between the ceiling and the top of the bed. Okay. okay. So there's so there's a space between the ceiling and the top of the bed, and um, 
And when I pointed there, she says like, um, you know, she said that, uh, try not to look at it too often. Huh? What? Try not to look at the area <laughs> too often. Be- between the, 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 so the it's bed, and bed the, yeah. and the ceiling. It's almost bed. The, nice. Okay. And then when I pointed to the, um, to the bathroom, she also said that there's lots of very weird energy coming from there. Oh my God. Okay. So I'm like, okay, all right. Firstly, I'm, I'm going to be here for three days, yo. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Okay. So I'm like, okay, you know, um, uh, so the thing about my wife is that she, she, she senses these things, but because I'm so blind to it, mm. both in terms of feeling as well as sight, of course, um, you know, I'm like, okay, whatever. All right. So when I slept, I kept hearing creaking from the top of them. Oh, okay. come on. So first night I was like, okay, I'm just gonna ignore it. I'm tired, I'm jet lagged, I'm gonna sleep. Okay. Second night, same thing happened. Um, I tried to look, but I didn't see anything, but just, I just had this weird feeling. Not just that, but then I took a bath. Uh, this was December mm. in, in the UK. It was cold as hell. Yeah. Turned on a hot bath. Okay, went in there. It was hot for a while. There was a moment where it, I suddenly felt ice cold while I was in the hot bath. Wow. Yeah. So it was like, I was warm, warm, you know, like, okay, it's, it's a nice warm bath. Uh, it's a nice warm bath. And, and, and suddenly everything just turned very icy. Mm. Damn. Um, yeah. Uh, I had very weird dreams that night, the second night. Very weird dreams. Just um, very weird um, people smiling at me like they were I was dreaming of the bed and like they were picking up from from that for the thought that space between the ceiling oh hell no wait wait mm. people was, but plural hum, people ish humanoid okay oh. but their limbs seem um disproportionate and they were smiling it was it was like bro it was overly wide their smiles oh, a bit too wide <laughs> I mean but it was a dream you know I woke up I was like okay whatever yeah um yeah uh, and okay, I remember the weirdest thing about the dream um, is the idea that um, I met. I remember, I remember the feeling so so clearly that, that I meant nothing. That I was, it was like a, a dismissing of my um, status as a person, uh, you know, who who deserves to be saved, who has rights, blah blah, blah all that. It, it felt like a like like I was not allowed to be in the dream. Yeah, in the dream lah. That was the feeling I got oh from God. looking at these things. These roots. Yeah. Roots, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're very yeah, so root. It, it was a dis it was a dismissing of my humanity. Could oh you see God. the faces? I mean like it just I Were there faces or no faces? There I mean there were smiles at the very least. Oh my god. <laughs> it was white. I, I just wanna establish something so that there's like just to reduce any <laughs> doubt. You didn't piss off your wife before you left. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> well, well, ish, because she wanted to come along, but then like, I was like, yeah, budget. Because like, we, were, we were going, it was December, we were going for another trip soon after that. Okay, so, you okay. know. But, but, yeah. but like, why though? Why would you like, what's that video? Call her and then you get it's freaked your out. your wife lah. Yeah, I mean, you but are. like, get freaked out. It's like, <laughs> See, if I mean, it was like, me, I'm like, hey, shut up, shut up. <laughs> hey, shut up, <laughs> uh, happy thoughts. Uh. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, yeah, it was, I think she so okay. So when I discovered it was the, it was supposedly the oldest and most haunted hotel in the UK. Yeah, I sent it to her. So oh like, okay, no! Yeah. So so then what happened? I mean nothing. The third day, uh, nothing much happened. Um, I didn't dare to drink. Cause the, like, the dream was on the second night. Second night. Oh, third night nothing. Okay, it was quite weird. So, so like, but I didn't dare to drink because I was I was scared like under the influence of alcohol. Or you know when you make it worse. Yeah, yeah, your guts down, right? Yeah. So I didn't like when when yeah, all the other true. journalists were there went to drink at the bar. I was like, yeah, it's okay. I'm gonna have water. <laughs> <laughs> so, but they, the other journalists, nothing happened to them. I asked them, nothing happened. So I asked them on oh, breakfast. You, you're so lucky. Yeah, I, I asked them on breakfast the, on the third day, and they're like, yeah, oh, nothing. Did you tell like the the hotel people like, hey, you know, I uh I, no I, no I didn't. I mean, I, I didn't want to, you know. Can I should have told Dyson, like, you, you know, you fly me all the way here, look at your products, then you... <laughs> Could you have put me in a less hotel? <laughs> exactly, you guys can make these nice vacuums, make a nice hotel. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So after that, nothing happened. It's just like the the, the smiling. Nah, but what, yeah. what, did you have control in the dream? No. Or uh, it's just like a kind of viewing kind of dream? Uh, here's the thing. So 
I I usually okay. A the weird thing is that I I don't always remember my dreams. Right. Mm. I forget most of my dreams. Some stick to me and they tend to be the scarier ones. Mm. Uh, that was one of the particular ones. Um, mm. uh, and I can't lucid dream. Mm. I wish I right. could honestly. I wish I had control. But um, most of my in most of my dreams, I'm either staying still in one place or I'm running from something. Mm. Right. Yeah, so I wasn't running this one. I was just <coughs> in place. Oh, that's quite scary, sir. Yeah. yeah. Oh, lovely. Yeah. But again, we are smiling at you. <laughs> yeah. so nope. I like how from the second story, Wesley is really like. <laughs> so, like I said, the thing is, I don't see. Yeah. Right. I. I but that's pretty weird, though. Experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so a lot of <coughs> weird things have happened, but I don't. I've never seen. Yeah. Again, not a request. So, <laughs> I, 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 do you still cycle to all the place? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think a freaking grab. Okay. Wait, well, was that the reason that stopped you? <laughs> I mean, I mean, sort of, sort of yeah, yeah. So, honestly, honestly, like, I mean, I still do cycle every now and then, but yeah. I, I, but not I, there, I, la. Yeah, not there, More, la. more well lit. Would, would you? Yeah. Would you do it again? I think I would, but not alone, la. But the problem here's the problem with me. You know, okay, you know when you do some. You do something bad. Yeah. You break the rules and yep. you don't get caught. Yeah. You do it again, right? Yeah. So same thing here. You mm. don't you experience something you don't really see. So the, the full effect of mm. if it was a thing, mm. if it was a supernatural being, yep. the full effect of what it wanted to do to you, or <laughs> the full effect of its horror, of how it can terrify you, you don't register it, right? Because you can't see. So I'm one of those people. <laughs> no, I'm one of those people. But that's the that's the <laughs> thing though. Okay. I mean, it's just slight tangent to both of you, this question. Which is scarier? Seeing it, but not hearing it. Or hearing it and not seeing it. For me, it's seeing it. Because I, yeah, maybe because I've never really seen, so yeah, seeing, seeing is like, yeah. Like seeing it is more scary, <laughs> but no sound one. So, so imagine okay. you see like something floating, but no sound, like completely no sound. Oh, that is, that is frightening. But no sound, like, so it's just floating, but it cannot do anything to you, just no sound. Or like you're hearing like, you know, like yeah, yeah, like yeah. weird sound, but it's around you all night. That is frightening. I think one of the <laughs> most scary things about the idea of a supernatural uh, encounter is that there is some aspect of the real world that it doesn't for or, or some f- law of physics that it doesn't follow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Something moving around me, walking around your house, for yeah. example, I will make noise, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the idea that something's moving around Without and sound. doesn't make noise, mm-hmm. yeah, that, that that's kind of freaky actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, win. Scary. Well, my, my immediate thought after you said that was something moving around but not making noise. Scary, but also quite polite. Because yeah. <laughs> if so I'm sleeping, I don't really want to no, no, sound or no Sound or sound. <clears throat> oh, that is a tough one. Um, <laughs> I've been trying to think of the answer for this since you asked the question. So I'm like... Sound but no sight. Uh, no, sight but no sound. Sight but no sound. Mm-hmm. But you will see that. Yeah, but at least like I'm seeing it I, I almost feel like what's equally as frightening is having the sounds out there and then it just drives you like crazy mm. thinking about it. Then your head starts making up stuff mm. that could be worse. Mm. <clears throat> and then like you fall, you know, you start imagining based on the sounds. Mm. I rather just see it and go, oh mm. crap. Mm. And then- You know where to run run away from. Yeah? I know, yeah, exactly. No, that's <laughs> oh, exactly. There, okay. I, I know, oh, okay, it's over there. <laughs> I run that way. Whereas if it's like, like you know, you hear voices from every different direction, you're like, okay, wh- what, am I, what am I gonna do now? Yeah, the headphones, true. maybe. That's true. Yeah. 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 For well, me, it's also sight. Yeah, because you, guys just, close your, you just close your eyes. Uh. Yeah. You can't hear anything as you close your eyes. Sure. Play music. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I will never close my eyes again if I see one of those. See that, now, now I'm just gonna like, <clears throat> I can actually picture the, the ridiculous grins that the, the Yeah. I mean, I've been playing a, f- a few horror games recently. So there are some monsters that do not have eyes or nose, but they can smile, which yeah. is quite terrifying. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah, when you put it in. Or maybe they just try to be friendly. Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. Okay. Wesley. It is your turn, Wesley. It is your turn to share with us some stories that you either have or I've heard. Okay, I can share two experiences, but Ooh. they're not super scary or anything. Uh, but I thought they were kind of interesting. Oh, you you say they're not <laughs> super scary. It always starts with that. I was like, oh, it's not super scary. <laughs> the end, I was like, oh. so I think. Or, I mean, 
um, in, in my life, there were always like there was there were always small occasions where these mm. things would happen. But then you always try to um, bring some logic to it and go like, oh, this yeah. happened because this and that and that. Oh, that kind of makes sense. So mm. there's always mm. that explanation. But yep. at the same time, it can always be not that explanation. It can just be something mm. else. So my first experience is um, something from about three, four years ago. So mm-hmm. when I was living in my older place, my old place in Seng Kang mm. with my wife. And so we came back one night from the car park, going to the lift. And then we saw, I saw like an old, not old, it's a dollhouse near the lift. Someone threw a dollhouse, but it was like new. It was like oh, spanking okay. new, but not in a box, but it was there. Mm. So at the time, my niece was about three years old. Mm. So just backstory, I, I grew up with a lot of secondhand things. So mm. I, I don't mind secondhand stuff. So yeah. anyway, so I saw this thing. I was like, oh, cool. I can wipe it and give it to my niece and she can play a bit for a while and then throw it away or something. So I was, and my wife's like, what? You want to bring back? And I said, yeah, it looks, it looks new. Look at it. It looks so new. Like, it's not, no one touched it. I was like, okay. So I brought back this dollhouse home and I cleaned it with a wet cloth. It was new. It's kind of nice. It's not like an older house. It's not, it's not made of wood. It's made of plastic, mm. Mm. but it was new. So I was like, okay, um, this weekend I'll bring it to my niece. Um, for now, I'll just keep it in the storeroom. So I put mm. it in the storeroom and then I closed mm. the storeroom and then we went to sleep. Sleeping, sleeping, sleeping. And then at 1 a.m. I heard, we both heard, we both woke up and we heard the sound going ding da dong ding 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 oh and we're like what God. the hell is this <laughs> so, so I went out of the room and I'm like trying to follow the sound ding ding and it led to the storeroom I was like okay so I opened up the storeroom and then basically this dollhouse had a doorbell okay an electronic doorbell that just kept going on and on so I was like wow so my first reaction is like wow hey this, this dollhouse has a doorbell <laughs> wow it's like so cool so <laughs> My wife does, wasn't too, weren't too happy, and I was like, yeah, bro. So I went to it, and I tried to switch that. I found, oh, there is a button, a small button at the door you can press for a doorbell. So I tried to press it to off it, but I can't. And I press a press, and oh, okay, it went off. Then my wife said, I think we'll just take out the battery in case it goes off again. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, okay, so I took the screwdriver and took out the battery and put it aside and put the dollhouse there and then closed. So I could tell my wife wasn't too comfortable that this dollhouse was. But for me at that time, I was like, wow, cool, it sound. Such a good, such a good find. So, <laughs> so we had to sleep. So anyway, in my house, I have two cats. Mm-hmm. Okay, so a white cat and a gray cat. So we were sleeping at night. And then at 3 a.m., I heard one of my cats go like, meow, meow, like, like totally crazy. Like mm. a little bit like they were, they were they are fighting that kind of sound, but a, yeah. a lot more than that. Um, so it was like a cat going bonkers. It is the same night. Same after. night, yeah. Okay. Yeah, like two hours later at 3 a.m. So we woke up again. So I went to find, and then we were like quite shocked because this cat started meowing like crazy and then mm. running around the house like mad. Eventually this cat, went to one of the rooms and behind the door as the door was closed yeah. so we went behind so I could and as I went approach the door I could hear the cat like uh, mew, mew, mewing feet in fear mm. like, mm, like whimpering yeah, yeah, yeah. so I was like okay so I opened up the door to see where's the cat so it's my white color cat called Moyashi yeah. then she's just like like curled up in fear so I was like hey Moyashi what's wrong what's wrong with you and then on her tail was a small little rope tied in the knot like her tail right but you have a like right. small rope that's tight. So I was like, what? So so we untied it and then she's like, okay, she's quite okay. But the, so the thing, the logical explanation is that she was playing in the storeroom. She got tangled up with a piece of rope and it somehow tangled, tied a knot on her tail. But mm-hmm. it's quite difficult because that knot is, it's quite a human knot. Yeah. Like. It's quite yeah. a human knot. So. It doesn't happen accidentally. Not yeah, yeah, quite exactly. difficult. It must be like, but can, can be like, I, I wouldn't say can't happen. So I untied it and then I threw this piece of rope, which probably came from the storeroom, like a piece of white rope. So my wife is like, I think you better bring the dollhouse back down <laughs> now. <laughs> so I was like, okay. Oh so I took God. the dollhouse, I brought it back home. I brought it down to where I found it at like 3 a.m. and left it there. And after that, everything was, was all right. So I was talking to a friend recently and um, he was talking about um, how sometimes these ghostly things can possess or take or like take form into an item or yeah. find home into yeah. an item, supposedly. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, that made me think about the dollhouse. So I was talking to him. I was like, oh, maybe that could be one explanation where some form of a spirit could inhib- in, could find a home in this very nice dollhouse, yeah, which I had to throw back down. And now I think about it, right? I should have <laughs> thrown it in a bin or something. I just put it there for someone to take it Somebody again. Take it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a vicious cycle. Uh. I, yeah. I love how after everything that's happened, I can still hear the regret in your voice. Like, actually, yeah. <laughs> it was a very sound, nice house. house. He had sound. <laughs> <laughs> got ding dong on it. Yeah, I mean, if your wife had not said anything, you confirm keep on it. Maybe I would have, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I would have, yeah. But sometimes I think back in retrospect and go like, hey, actually, actually it's bad. Yeah, but at that point in time, I, I don't see it. Yeah. 
I before you even get to your second story, I I quite sure the lesson here is right. Both your wife's very smart. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Just the the clear through line in these stories. Yeah. Yeah. Both your wife's very smart. So the reason why women live longer than men. I yes. think this yeah. is Definitely. <laughs> but I feel like I feel like Westy takes a very chill approach to it. Yeah. So oh yeah, got sound. Uh. Oh, the cat got that. <laughs> okay, uh. I put it put it back. Uh. Yeah. It's fine. Uh. Cause like the, the sound, okay, fair enough. If you had told me like later on, even after you took out the battery, but sound that's a different story. Yeah. But like it, <laughs> I, I was thinking the exact same thing. Yeah. There's certain knots that like yeah. and cats can get into weird places, I'm sure. Mm. But the fact that it was tied on the tail and everything, that mm. immediately I was like, mm, yeah. mm, mm. how did the grey cat react? Um, he was just hiding. Oh, he's just yeah, hiding. He's just hiding, yeah. Oh, it's okay. wow. But like, but I think even if there's a spirit, there's spirit, like, wow, this guy late chase, yeah. <laughs> I warned him like two times already. Yeah. He's still <laughs> down there like, I my, I my, like, like one, no one, one, no one. <laughs> this guy like, how to scare this guy. <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the, I think the most impressive part is that you let your cat free roam the storeroom also. Uh. Yeah, because I think the storeroom is a bit agile so they can go in and explore. Okay. Yeah, so they nice. must have gone in. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, mm. second story. Oh, okay, second story is a bit shorter. Mm -hmm. So it's just a uh, experience. So my students um, are film students and yeah. they always film at um, places they can film at. So for example, they can rent, they can kind of rent um, mm. old abandoned schools mm. in Singapore. So oh, okay. this is happening for years, even like during Carl's time, I think. Yeah. And um, so they will always rent the place and then sometimes if I'm free, I'll go and pop by and see how they are doing. So mm. I'll pop by to an old school. Usually it looks abandoned, like hell, and it looks like trash. Yeah. I'm just there to see them. Okay, you guys are okay, okay, bye-bye. So one time I went to visit this school and it's at Woodlands. I mm. can't remember the school name, but it was near like an uh, LRT or MRT, not LRT, uh, MRT station. Mm -hmm. So it was an abandoned school. It's, it goes uphill a, a bit. Mm -hmm. So I went in the school, um, I was like, okay, just park my car, I went out and I walked into the school. And it's quite cool, the school looks really cool, like an assembly area in the front, and then you can see many levels where the classes would be, and uh, the school hall is on whatever yeah. side. So when I walked in, I could, I went up to the second level, trying to find them, because the school is huge. Mm -hmm. And I could hear my students um, in the front, to the left, at the corridor. I can hear them talking at the corridor. So I was like, oh great, they're there, I'll go say hello to them. Mm. So I walked down and I turned to the corridor where they are chatting and yeah. I can hear them very clearly. And as I turned, it was empty. Oh, so the, the feeling I had at that time is like, oh shit. <laughs> great. So I was like, and then at the same time, I tried to bring logic to it. I was like, maybe they could have like walked really fast and turned somewhere, maybe. <laughs> okay, okay. Possible, possible. Okay. So I was like, so I looked around, I looked around the school, I was like, okay. okay. So I walked a bit more. So in fact, then I could hear them, hear some sounds from the school assembly hall, which is on the second level. Mm. So I walked in, um, there were like maybe 30 of them and including cast and crew and, yeah. and actors. And so they were all filming. And so usually when I visit a film set, my student set, the, because I'm not really meant to be there, so I'm quite yeah. an unusual guest. So when I go on the film set, the first thing that will happen is they, they go like, hey, hey, hi Wesley, you're here to visit us. That's a very normal kind of thing. And so when I entered, they were, not filming, they were preparing and doing right. stuff. So I walked in, waiting for someone to say, hello, Wesley. I brought like drinks for them. So I walked in and then no one said hello to me. So I was like, <laughs> well, they must be very busy, but not that busy, They're just walking around, sitting, chatting. So I walked and they were sitting, they were in a big, forming like a, around, like a big circular area in the hall. Mm -hmm. So I walked around, I walked one whole round and no one saw me. And no one said hello, which is weird, you know? So it's very unusual until I had to go to someone and go like, hey, so I brought the drinks and they were like, hey, Wesley, you're here, hi. I was like, okay, here is your drinks, how it's going and stuff like that. Okay. So I was like, okay, so even I didn't think about it, maybe they just didn't see me or I, maybe I blend as a student, I don't know. So, <laughs> so, so okay, never mind. So I, I, went, I went off after that, so mm. I went back home. And then, um, so I went to research when I went home, I was like, hmm, this, the school's name, is, which I forgot the name, it's in Woodlands. And then it came up as one of the search finds as top 10 haunted schools in Singapore. And I was like, oh, <laughs> nice, nice, nice. But I was just reading a bit about it. So, okay, cool. So I didn't think about it anymore. So the next week when my students came back for classes, I was like, hey, so how was your shoot? How did it all go? Okay, did you get the shots, everything? Then they mm. said, oh man, it was, it was bad. Um, we had to leave every day at 5.30 without fail. We cannot stay there at night because there were too many um, occurrences that would happen. So everybody would go in twos, wherever they want to go, they would go together with someone. They would never go alone. Um, they said they saw some 
person in white, I can't remember, something like a person in white clothes near the rooftop or something like that. But generally, I think many of them did not feel good. Oh, yeah, so that was the general thing. That was like, oh, okay. Then I remember, oh yeah, I experienced that thing. I told, <laughs> told it to them. They're like, what? <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of kind of cool. Is this school in Woodlands? It's a... Is this still Fuchun? around? Is it Fuchun? I'm imagining. I don't know. Is, is this still around? Um, this story is like three, four years ago. So either they broke down the school or it's still there for filming. Three either way. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I like how if we stopped your story at a certain point, it just sounds like you are just very angry that your students didn't acknowledge you. It must be ghost. <laughs> la. It can't be that they don't say hi to me. Yeah. <laughs> so come on guys, I bought you guys drinks. <laughs> you never acknowledge me. So rude. <laughs> yeah. Did they, so they, they, the figure that they saw was on the rooftop, the figure in white. Yeah, and so they, took, they took a video of it and they showed it to me. But to me, it looked like pixels lah to be honest, uh, in front of video. Yeah. So I'm quite a skeptical person. I try to analyze it and go like, oh, what's the logic in this? Maybe some shadow and <laughs> stuff. Be, yeah. You, yeah. you, you should score them. You guys have a perfectly fine cinema camera. The one use useful then. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, can shoot low light, then you use phone to shoot pixel later. You show me like actual footage, like nice high def footage of the ghost, then okay, I believe you. But no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, maybe it was a creative choice. Maybe they wanted to get like the found footage kind of feel to it. Yeah. No, but there, there are occurrences where it actually got captured on tape. Like mm. like spirits, right? Mm. Like yeah. I think like some films as well, they, they got yeah. some like supernatural mm. elements in yeah. Yeah. some of the Hollywood films as well. So yeah. I I wanna ask you this story. I don't know if you've heard of it. Um I also don't know if you can like acknowledge it because mm. it's where you work. Marcel? Yeah. <laughs> I like really? how he just went for it. Oh, yeah, have you heard of the story of Charlie? Charlie the ghost? No. no. Okay. Charlie. So so uh, <laughs> Are you thinking of Charlie the horse? No, no, no. Unicorn? So so I, I have to set some context. I only yeah. found out about this story after I graduate. Oh. So I, I didn't know about it. So so LaSalle, uh, the new building in LaSalle is actually uh built on top of old HDB that, that was torn down. So okay. nothing ha- creepy about it, uh, right? So it shouldn't shouldn't have any supernatural elements. But um when I was in film school we had a film cage which is at the basement of the school, which is super creepy right beside the car park mm. so you have to take a lift down and then it has no light so it's super dark like it kind of feels like the basement of a hospital mm. and it's super cold yeah. so we have to go super deep into the film cage to uh, redraw equipment and then they have like another site where it's like uh, large cages right. almost like a candle but like to, to store equipment when you are you're done when you're renting it out so I remember uh, for my final year project Obviously, right, I was shooting a horror film. <laughs> so, um, uh, we the horror film was not very good and we, we, we had a lot of issues on set. I think because of the director, I wasn't the director, I was the, the cinematographer, but because of the director refusal, uh, straight up refusal of praying, I told him that we need to pray before we make a horror film, mm. for sure. Mm-mm. And he refused. Mm-mm. And then the house that we rented was kind of weird. Lah. Like it, it, it had that, that damn abandoned, but not really, it's not abandoned, but like abandoned, but not really abandoned kind of feel. Right. It was one of our students' uh, uh, parents' place. It's a studio studio apartment, very old one. So so we, we film a lot of night scenes in the day. So we would like, like now I black out everything mm. and, and then I would light and then we would just shoot. So like a lot of uh, bad vibes on the set. So the producer will fight with the director. Yeah the director will fight with you. So basically everybody fought with the director, except for me. La. And then by the end of the, the, the whole the whole project, right, like there were only three people left. Like the crew uh, to finish the project. <laughs> so we finished as hard as we could. Uh, we did the horror scenes and everything. And uh, the last day of shoot, we had to rec- return equipment to the school. So the director drove. So he drove me back to school, just the two of us only. Mm. And then poor me, right? Then he's like, oh, I have a car. So I will park the car right beside the cage. And then we will, you will go in by the car park. Oh. And I had to wheel everything into the, the, the film cage. And I remember clearly, right? When I opened the film cage, it was like about 11 p.m. Completely dark. Mm. And then the light switch is all the way at the end <laughs> to the lift on the other exit. So guess who had to walk in the dark? I'm guessing you. Yes. <laughs> So at that point, I was still, that's a 2015, I was still quite an atheist. La. So I walked, okay, okay, I online. Nothing to be afraid of, I just made a horror film. I go, yeah, online. Ah. Then I can feel like, 
like the hair on my back my neck and feel stand but like okay lah it's, I just made a horror film and it's tan it's creepy hmm. normal lah okay then I load 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 boom, boom. but I can feel like as I load the equipment right I load faster and faster, <laughs> faster. <laughs> alone come on alone then faster okay open the door okay, go home yeah then after when we finished the film and then we had our like you know ceremony to showcase our projects right yeah. then one of the fashion students actually told me did you know that the film cage uh, where you store equipment and they, they have some classrooms there so, so mm. it's very haunted it's like oh I'm not surprised eh. it's like haunted by who it's like, haunted by this Caucasian young boy by the name of Charlie Charlie yeah okay yeah and I was like oh that makes sense uh, uh, I've not seen him but uh, I have had weird vibes lah and one thing about me is that because uh, some of the toilets are quite disgusting. Uh. So I like to, you know, do my business at the basement toilet also. <laughs> when nobody dares to go, for some reason, people scared of that toilet. I just go. Hmm. But I always also got the weird vibes uh, hmm. because, yeah, it's very dark. Yeah. So so after I heard the story, I was like, wow, this one is quite quite creepy. So I I, I had had a few interns from the cell and I've asked them and all of them know about the, the Charlie, the ghost, the little boy. So do you hmm. know about Charlie? No, I don't. But now... I'm scared no, to go no. out the basement. <laughs> <laughs> See, I thought what you were going to say is, oh, now I've got something to tell my students. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe go put oh. a dollhouse, go find a dollhouse, put there, yeah, and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just leave the house. I heard you're looking for a home. <laughs> yeah. So, so which is, <clears throat> the, the thing that baffles me is that it used to be HGB. There's no sign of it being a colonial house or anything. So like, why mm. would there be a, like, an Angmo boy, like, who running knows, around like, in the basement. You know, just because it used to be HDB doesn't mean like there isn't a history before that. That is so. true. Yeah. But very specific. Very, very specific. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. I like how unassuming uh, his name is as well. Charlie. Charlie, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 No, but like who asked the name? I think they said, oh, they just named him Charlie. La. They and just I, assume. I hear the name Charlie, I just think about like <laughs> like Changi Village, Charlie's Corner or something like that. Some place. Charlie's something, Corner. Something very innocuous like that. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So all ghost stories, including Charlie, the, the, the strange young man that's roaming around the basement of LaSalle. Yes. All ghost stories. Okay, okay. Um on a on a slightly less frightening and like hair raising <laughs> note. Do you do both of y'all have like any favorite kind of horror games, horror mm. movies, horror comics, horror books? What are your favorites? Um, I, I, I play um, this uh, kind of like horror game so it's by a company called I believe it's Supermassive Games mm -hmm. so I, I think it's them maybe I'm imagining but um, they, they, they do like Until Dawn and a few of these games mm. uh, so they are more like interactive storybooks kind of games where Ooh, you walk okay. a little bit then cut scene for like 20 yeah. minutes that kind right. of thing yeah. so they do some really nice one there's one called Little Hope Mm. Um, which is about like a haunted village kind of stuff. So, and they have a whole anthology series. Uh, so that's what I like to do for my horror. I got, I got play also. Oh, the the one the one that I played was the ship one. Oh, okay. Uh, made of Medan. Ah, uh, yeah, Made of Medan. Man, 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 man of Medan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's also part of that yeah, trilogy. Same, same, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's quite it's quite, quite creepy. Yeah, mm. the 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 decision game that we have to I mm. play. Then which who was? dies? Uh, oh, who, right. Okay, yeah, okay. That's okay. that's the game. Oh, okay. Hmm. It's pretty creepy. Yeah. Any any favorite horror books or movies or anything like that? Um, I think about horror movies, right? Uh, it. I mean, every you time don't get there's like a there's like a <laughs> there's like a nine out of ten chance that the horror movie would suck a little bit. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's hard to find a good horror film, right? You're so right. Yeah. so there's always that disappointment that would come. Yes. I was watching one with like Russell Crowe as a priest. Oh, so I, I, oh, you just saw that. Oh, oh my God. The, the Pope's oh exorcist or something. Yes. Else. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, kill me. Like, what the hell? So, and then, but I think one which I like more recently was called, I don't think it's horror. I can't remember, but it's more, it's called The Barbarian, I think. Or Barbarian? It's called oh, Barbarian. Barbarian. Right? Um, yeah. I think it's on Disney, I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 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 That was nice. That was nice. That was oh, nice okay. and creepy. Yeah. If you guys haven't seen it, you can check it out. I, that's, that's next on my list. It's good. It's a good yeah. one. Yeah. Nice. Oh, okay. that's, that's not horror, thriller lah. Horror, uh, horror thriller, yeah. Oh. yeah. Not supernatural, but mm. looks like supernatural, but actually not, yeah. Mm. Mm. Nice. Sufian? Um, well, my favorite, okay, uh, I follow the works of um, Mike Flanagan and mm. Mary Esther a lot. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, Mike Flanagan, especially, I, I think mm. the, the Haunting of Hill House, the way he mm. did it, that was yeah. the 
perfect meld of personal trauma, horror, and mm. just yeah. a good family story. Yep. Um, I, I, and I think this is my favorite kind of horror. Like it, it can't just be horror for the sake of horror. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It can just be a bunch of jump scares yep. Yep. put yep. together into a three X structure. Yep. It's just, you know, um, there has to be that did. human element to it. Exactly, yeah. yeah. There has to be a there has to be a deeper story behind all of it. Um, and he he does allegorical storytelling mm. so well as well. So um, Mike Flanagan as a horror writer, mm. I've been studying. Mm. Uh, right. Yeah. Um, uh, Ari Aster, I yeah. don't think I'll ever be like him in terms of the stories I tell. But oh man, <laughs> he, he tells such <laughs> freakishly disturbing stories. I think the last time I was properly afraid in a horror movie, as an adult of course, was Hereditary. Mm. Mm. Yeah, have you guys seen that? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah of course. So when you talk about doll houses, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the image mm. of that, that, that um, cause she was making dioramas, right? Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, that came to me. Um, yeah, so mm. I'm, I'm about to watch um, Bo is Not Afraid. Yeah, the new one, right? Yeah, yeah. by mm. Ari Aster. Um, but, I love his previous two works, um, mm. Midsommar and yeah. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, those are the, I, okay, I'm the kind of guy who would, uh, when I really love something, I rewatch it over and over again. Yeah. Which is bad because sometimes I'm, I'm quite um, resistant to new works. Yeah. But it's because I really want to break down and really understand, yeah, yeah. you know, how- Really study it, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've been really studying, um, um, the haunting of your house for a while, mm. yeah. Just to just to kind of reverse engineer what happened in the writer's room, you know, what happened on shoot, what happened when he was planning the story, mm. yeah, how he went from conceptualization to the movie itself, uh. yeah. yeah. Does the does the freakiness does the freakiness level drop for you with every <laughs> subsequent mm. reviewing? Uh yes. Okay. So that's. I mean, we are all in the media here, so I, yeah. I'm sure there's. A, a lot of the things we love mm. gets viewed academically yeah. as well, yeah. rather, right? So, so yes. Um, I mean, the first time I watched Hereditary was um, so when I watch things alone, I tend to watch them, them academically. But yeah. when I'm watching with my family or my friends, yeah. then it becomes a just a viewing experience, yeah. right? Mm. So, so that was probably freaky. But if I'm watching things alone, I don't, I don't get scared anymore. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, so I'm I'm kind of immune to horror. <laughs> Famous last words, but <laughs> really, really, it really does sound like a challenge. Like, 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 like um, Shutter, The Ring. I mean, okay, uh, when I first watched those, of course, I was a kid, so like, yeah. you know, and that was before I probably uh, watched the film, um, yeah. you know, and, and broke down the script. Or, yeah, you yeah. Know, or Are you still able to do that? Like, sure. not break down the script and just turn off that. that hard, very hard. Very hard right? It's one of those yes. job hazards, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I get it. I get it. I get it. I can't. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I do have uh, one question. Fan questions. A fan question yeah. for actually yeah. all three of you. <clears throat> How do you make it as a writer in Singapore slash Southeast Asia? <laughs> <laughs> the look on your face. You're like, <laughs> I, need, I need to play back later to see all the face. <laughs> okay. How do you make it as a, oh my God. <laughs> you're, you're getting a bargain. You're getting like three advice. So I, yeah. I like how this seems to be the scariest question you all have been asked so far. <laughs> Actually, that's true. Uh. <laughs> okay. So, so when you guys, so Wesley, when you came into Epigram, it was after they closed the London office, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I'm speaking from a person who was part of Epigram's journey into London. Mm. And I will tell you that um, if you want to make it a sustainable, viable career, doing it alone in Singapore alone is difficult. Mm. So I think we are the exceptions, but most authors in Singapore tend to come from privilege. Mm. Because, you know, <laughs> I, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll, I'll just leave it as, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I mean, all of us, uh, most most authors, have to juggle a full time job, a day yeah. job, and and the passion project, right? Yeah. Um. So, so that is the reality. Like you can't if you think that you know, I and I met a lot of like young authors who, who got, who got very jaded because of this. Mm. Like they think, oh, Epigram's gonna pick up my book, or whoever publishes gonna pick up my book they're gonna publish it and mm. that's it. You know, everything falls to place, I'm gonna be the next JK Rowling. 
Uh, and of course that doesn't happen because mm. um, reality sets in. You yeah. realize that your book is one of many in Singapore alone, yep. let alone the world. Um, and the honestly, the work properly begins once it's out there. It's not even when you're writing it, right? Mm. So, um, so there, there are lots of um, there are lots of things that were glamorized um, because we've been mm. comparing our own writing industry or literary industry to the ones in the UK and US, mm. where you know five figure, six figure advances. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to happen here for a while yeah. because just because of how mature or non mature the the industry is, mm. um, yeah. So so be prepared to face some harsh truths, but know that it's it's a vital um, whatever you're doing if you as you're contributing stories to to Singapore's um, literary consciousness, mm. it's 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 important work. Uh. Mm. Yeah, Wesley. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, I agree with Sufian, and I think um, also depends on what um, make it means to um, that individual. I think yeah. everyone has a different version of what make it means. But in the normal version of make it, it means that okay, I'm a known writer, and then I can live off and just be an author forever. Mm. Yeah, so that's the the, the dream lah. But of course, it's difficult. Definitely, it's not something that I, I I don't have. So so when I when I when I go to a, a library or to a bookstore, I like to flip and see like, oh, how many print has this book done? So when I see, mm. for example, Harris Wynn Potter, I say, oh my god, you went through so many prints. I feel I feel <laughs> no. so so proud because like, wow, it managed to do something which yeah. no one expected, right? So I was like, wow, it managed to reach out to so many people. I think yeah. like so amazing, like mm. amazing work, Sophia. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. So I think. Um, it depends on the individual what make it means. Um, in terms of financial wise, it's um, how do I put it? Uh, it's 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 a uh, diff- difficult. I think it's beyond difficult. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But it's um, possible. I mean, for me, I think for many writers also, um, my writing it's all about what I'm doing is like a passion project that I do yeah. outside of my full-time job. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think I'm lucky that my full-time job, um, I, I enjoy it. So, mm. so, so that, that makes it a lot easier, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm going to cheat a bit before yeah. I answer and like ask a follow-up question. <clears throat> Both of you guys work in, I mean, like you, you work for August. August man, yeah. and you know you, you teach filmmaking and everything. So there's 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 elements of writing and there's elements of storytelling in yeah. your day jobs itself. Like, mm. do you find that that helps or hinders or affects how you write books, your your novels from there? Mm. How 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 do you, do you find like like that balance? Like, oh, it's a day job, but it's also a creative <coughs> job. Um, for me, it um it actually kind of sp- it encourages me to write more mm. like as in write my own stories. Yeah. So the thing about being a journalist, yeah. whether lifestyle journalist or any kind of journalist, yeah. you're telling somebody else's story. Yeah. Uh, as a lifestyle journalist, you're telling a brand story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and um, and it's 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 fun. It's a, it's a nice it's a it's a it's a nice job. Mm. Gives me cool access, but ultimately I'm not telling my own story. Mm. So so the urge, the need to tell my own story becomes stronger because mm. of my day job. Mm. Um, it keeps my writing sharp. Yeah. Uh, so w- when I'm thinking of how to express ideas, um, the day job keeps me sharp, mm. but uh, but the day job doesn't fulfill or quench my thirst to, to like tell my own story. Mm. So mm. that, so once I'm home, that, that comes alive. Like I, I need the that that the, the urge is stronger because I've been telling somebody else's story. Yeah. Mm. Nine to five. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Um for, for me as well, so when I teach my script writing classes, so thankfully I get to teach script writing class because mm. so I work with students and their ideas like all the time. So it always gets my brain kind of moving in, mm. in that direction. So it's not too cold. Mm. Um but I think um, because you have a full-time job, then um, whatever project you want to take on by the side, yeah. um, you have to almost be um, very choosy about it, at least for me. Yeah. Um, whatever I want to do, I make sure, okay, this is what I really want to do because it might just take up three years of my life ahead. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, 
it's also difficult because sometimes you take on projects that go nowhere. Mm. They never get made. I think 10 out of 10 things that I think about, maybe one actually gets made and nine just just falls flat or just doesn't get made because like, of money or just mm. I changed my mind or whatever. Yeah, so that happens. And I think it's difficult when you know, um, you're working on something, but it goes nowhere. And then you realize, oh my gosh, I lost two years of my life. Mm-hmm. And then you went, I did nothing actually, you know, and that, that kind of hurts quite, quite bad. Yeah. Um, if you're lucky, then it goes somewhere. Um, yeah, so that's the, that's the issue. Because I always worry, like I feel like, okay, I'm 30, what am I, 38? Yeah, 38. And I feel like, okay, maybe I'm like halfway or less, slightly less than halfway of my life. And mm-hmm. if I do one work that takes three, four years, how many, how much, time do I actually have then left to do what I want to do? Because actually there's not much time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then again, you also feel happy because you're like, okay, at least I have the opportunity to do what I love to do, which not everyone has that. So you kind of go like, okay, I should really appreciate this. And then, and then it works the other way. Can, then I start to feel like, maybe I'm not using my time right, right. right. <laughs> you know, I really, I'm really so lucky to have this opportunity and now I'm wasting it, like sitting around watching. Netflix or something. Yeah, so these are things that I think about. Yeah. Ah, that rabbit hole. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you? Yeah, I, I think my answer is probably going to be building on something that both of you all said, which is, you all are talking about your day jobs and everything. I think, well, again, like like you said, like what's your definition of to make it? I think mm. if I go by a certain definition to make it is that you're lucky enough to be able to do these books and you're really lucky enough that um, you know you have a publisher to work with and you're even more lucky, you're even luckier on top of that where you know people read and enjoy your books. I think what's most important is probably to have that day job. Like what you, you guys are saying, to have that day job to to make sure that you know you you have that security whether it's financial mm-hmm. or whether it's like mm-hmm. support from from friends and family and everything to have that sense of security so that at least when you start working on your your books or, or your quote unquote your personal creative projects at least that's one less thing that's weighing down the back of your mind when yeah. you start those things so to have that almost that foundation of security down there before you start working on those projects like that's if if your if your definition if your definition of success is to be able to put up books, I think that's where it starts. Mm. Have that sense of security, mm. yeah. I my answer very short because I was mostly just listening to your answer. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I, I swear I didn't send in that question, but I was very excited when Carl told me that question yeah. was coming in. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> talking about projects as well, like um, as we slowly start to wrap up the interview, what projects do you guys are, are you all involved in now, or do you have coming up? Uh, mm-hmm. anything you can talk about or anything you want to hint at what's coming up for you guys this year is my break year <laughs> so yeah, last year juggling um, my play Hunt, Make Hunters Great Again mm-hmm. and, uh, yes. uh, and my day job and all that I I, I, I needed to take a break you know mm-hmm. um, and, and I'm, I'm you know so I'm picking up teaching so mm-hmm. and, and that's been very interesting um, I've been teaching creative writing so so for me, it's it's kind of just laying back, uh, let the creative juices, you know, mm. re uh, reset, yeah. yeah, and and hopefully maybe next year I'm going to start something, you know. Right. Yeah, that's nice. a very good lesson that I need to learn to follow. Yeah, <laughs> and <Yes, Wayne. laughs> yeah, and also because I think my wife is like is completely because you know it's it's been nine to five uh, day job and then you know going for. Uh, supporting uh, rehearsals for Me Hunters Great Again last mm. year. Most of it, most of it was like that. So, mm. yeah, I can't do another year of that. And as we've established, your wives are very smart people. So, mm. <laughs> smart, smart move listening to. Them. Yep. Wesley, what about you? Um, I'll be doing a workshop for the Writers um, Singapore Writers Festival in November, December, I think. November, November, yeah, November. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So I'll be doing just a day workshop. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, mm. It's nice. to do with history and writing and stuff. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sweet. nice. nice. A- anything else that you're working on? Um, I'm trying to do a web series, uh, but that's like dependent on funding. So <laughs> yeah, hopefully I have good news yeah, to share, yes. but I don't think yeah. so. <laughs> yeah, you all always ask on the internet, ask us to do this film, do that web series. You think it's very easy, right? <laughs> but a lot of funding yeah. is needed. 
See lah, now, now you, you're feeding into his anger. Like, oh, see la, not, not really anger. It's just like, you know, it, it's, there's more to it. There's more yeah. to it. <laughs> um, we're going to close it out by asking uh, a question that we ask everybody. All our guests. Yep. Um, you can be as specific as you want or you can right. be as broad okay. as you want. So answer, for okay? both of us, right, it's th- something really dumb. Yes. Yeah. So the question is, what scares you? Yeah. For both of us, the, the answer- The most, the most, yeah. Yeah. What scares you the most? For both of us, the answer is lizard. Teacher, house lizard. Teacher. Specifically house lizard. Yeah. So oh, yes. you don't have to say like specific <laughs> horror <laughs> things or anything. Okay. Hmm. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> well, it's too late. It's out in the world already, man. Yeah. Mm, I think for me it's just one word, is it? Oh, it could be, it be anything. It could be anything. I think pain. Seeing others in pain, I think that scares oh, me. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's quite. Yeah. It's like some Superman level kind of empathy. Yeah. No, but like it's it it. <coughs> the only answer we had that comes even close to that was like I, I think somebody said oh um, uh, humanity or something like that. Mm. So okay lah, at least, at least like something that the Longkang Kitty said, right? Yeah. <coughs> Yeah, to, to be honest, that is probably the most serious answer we've had in a very <laughs> long time of doing this show. I, I, I was saying cockroach, yeah. flying cockroach. So yeah. that's, that's pretty normal. Why, why does like people in pain? Yeah. Uh, I think, not okay, not just any people, uh, but people I care about. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, okay. That's fine. Yeah. That, that is that's like your greatest fear. Yeah. Um, now that I mean, I never thought about it until you guys brought it up. I'm like, oh, oh, maybe that is would be one. But nice. for for individual, I think is um, I, I'm afraid of heights to some degree. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah so. I, I feel like I need to change my answer for my wife because <laughs> <laughs> now oh. now you're like, oh, I'm seeing uh, seeing the people I love. People like, ah, <laughs> yeah, chat post market for us. Oh, no, no, no. So the way to frame it is right. Okay, are you afraid of heights enough? Are you afraid of heights enough to actually want to go and save? Like your family. If you see them in pain, but then it's like damn high. I, I, then you need to like. Yeah, I, I can call it like parachuting and I, I was like a pilot cadet once. Oh. <laughs> so I, I can, I can like, um, not say overcome, but deal with it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Really small market. Yeah. <laughs> really small market. Lizard <laughs> cannot, lizard. <laughs> Sufyan. <laughs> My silly answer is snails. Ooh. There was one time when I was oh, army and like, yeah. and like I was I was putting somewhere and like oh. a family of snails crawled up to my hand. Nice. I just freaked out and mm. since then I just like I every time snails. So, so did you stay still? My shit. What? No, of course not. I give you, you my position. Also. I, was, I was doing mission some more. I give you my position. <laughs> <laughs> when you say a family of snail, right? You you must have like prone there for very long because they yeah, move yeah, them yeah. slow. And <laughs> also I fell asleep. So oh, nice. <laughs> I was supposed to like look out. For, it was supposed to be an ambush drill. <laughs> I was supposed to be at the like this. Uh, the next platoon passes by, then like you know. Ambush, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're really worrying all your reservist mates with this interview. <laughs> <laughs> the snail. <laughs> okay la. At, at least they are not like chicha. You know, chicha them fast. They can jump on you. They can move them fast. Yeah. You know when you when you go into a room, then you see a chicha, right? Then when you turn right, then they just disappear. They're like Batman. Like, boom. <laughs> sure. But mm. snail cannot, Batman. snail move them slow. Snail is like super slow. Yeah. Yeah, but there's the thing, it's just the, the they're slimy, they're- Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I get it. I, I, yeah. I don't like, I don't like also. Yeah. Yeah. So not a fan of escargot la. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had it once. It was difficult to eat to begin with. I felt like puking it out and- and even there was one time when somebody just fed it to me and didn't tell me it was escargot. Like it was wow. in the it was mixed Wallaway. in the salad kind of thing. And then like that's like a betrayal, man. That's right? the most, yeah, that's that's the most serious expression I've seen on you in this time. <laughs> like, <Yeah>. No, <laughs> yeah, no snails. Don't give me this. Uh, there's the spon- the weird sponginess when they eat them. Uh, uh, I can't. Okay, okay, okay. We'll, we'll move away from the, from the question. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's okay, man. You look so traumatized. Like, oh, God. Um, all right, let's wrap up everything. So ask where can people find you guys online? Yep. Like websites, social media, what do you want to tell people to look out for? Okay, um, hotmail.com, M-A-L-E, H-O-T-M-A-L-E.com. <laughs> Shall visit tonight. <laughs> <laughs> So no, I'm, 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 on, I'm on Instagram. I'm on Instagram at Sufian Hakim. Uh, I'm not a 12 year old girl, so I don't have TikTok. Um, but mini Instagram and Facebook, I guess. Uh, <laughs> my handle's the same for both, at Sufian Hakim. A little bit disappointed. Sorry. I would have loved to have seen what you have been doing on TikTok. <laughs> yes, yeah, that would be quite funny. <laughs> um, um, wait, so just to be clear, hotmail.com. <laughs> not 
M A L E. Not your not uh, your actual website, right? Also brown daddies no, I'm kidding. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You visit all these websites <laughs> at your own risk. Okay? Yeah, not not our problem, ah. Huh? We Sufyan, not us, is, are responsible for your browsing history. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Just, just social media. The social media handles. That's it. Uh, Wesley. Uh, yeah, same as Sufyan in, in terms of <laughs> terms of the social media aspect. Browndaddies.com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can find me there. Um, find my name in. I guess you'll find you find me around. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining yeah, us. Thank you this so much. It's so awesome. fun. It's really it's fun. Yes. yes. Pretty agreed. Um, now I shall again shall do the sword closing. Code. Do my my. Um, you want me to do it? No, 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 no. I can still do it. Okay. I've made I've made it this far without like losing my voice. Um, new episodes of Ghost Maps go online every second and fourth Thursday of the month on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and all major platforms. New episodes of Dead Air go online every thirteenth of the month on YouTube because branding. Um, to make sure you never miss an episode of either, subscribe now and follow us on social media at We Are Hantu. That's one word: W E A R E H A N T U. If you would like to share your own stories that could inspire future episodes of Ghost Maps, you can reach us through the contact form on hantu.sg or message us directly through Facebook and Instagram. You can also be one of our supporters on Patreon at patreon.com/weahantu. One. Two, three. And, and remember, remember just, just because they're stories, stories, it doesn't mean they're they not true. true. Okay, goodbye, everyone. Take Thanks care, for coming, guys. Thanks again, guys. If you want to stay up to date on Hantu and listen to our other podcasts like Ghost Maps, subscribe now and follow us on social media. You can also be one of our supporters on Patreon. Look for We Are Hantu or click the links in the description. Dead Air is a Hantu production. Hosted by Kai Ong and Win Ray, with album art by Jolin Lim, and recorded on Audio Technica mics. <laughs>